packaging, non-collapsible packaging, and so we have to be really efficient as we load everything into the truck. And uh, we also rely heavily on customers for, for our business. And then uh, one of our big customers, Nissan, we, it's kind of like way too far from location from our PC uh, distribution center, so it might uh, take some time to uh, deliver. We can look forward to some of the opportunities, such as the emerging technology, where we can use like an automated vehicle or a order slotting system or warehouse management system to increase our efficiency inside the facility. We can also look forward to upcoming contracts, maybe new customers coming in and uh, increase our uh, customer base. And uh, this is the perfect time to consider whether we have to redesign our fulfillment footprint and uh, seek ways to be more efficient in, inside our facility. Some of the threats, we talked to Ali, and she mentioned two companies, where first is the key safety systems, uh, two of our biggest competitors, and then ZF Friedrich Schaefer, which acquired DRW. So they're just, they're just getting stronger. And uh, that led us to uh, competitive pressure to lower prices. Great. So here we run into our options. Currently, the current operation goes from Ogden, the DC in Ogden, to um, our, our uh, leased out plant. We have a four-year contract with an olive branch, um, which is in between these two locations, Sm Smyrna and Canton. Can we click on the next one? Our, our first option is to have a direct store delivery where AutoLeave essentially takes over the transportation and instead of going to the crosstalk location in Olive Branch, we're going to go straight to Smyrna and Canton. Now, what this will do will um, it'll eliminate those dock handling costs um, at the crosstalk, as well as minimize lead time. At the crosstalk, they experience a two-hour to a two-day um, extra put-away process, or waiting for the Nissan trucks to come pick them up and go to Canton or Smyrna. So we can totally eliminate that lead time. Lastly, if we're able to do both those, minimize and eliminate, we're able to renegotiate prices as we're able to offer better prices. So to start off, the pros and cons of this option. Right off the bat, we have a $1.1 million cost savings. This, is, this cost savings um, goes over the cross stock handling costs. When a tote arrives at Olive Branch, um, the guesstimated cost is about $6.60 of handling or touch costs. So if we're able to avoid that entirely, we have a $1.1 million savings. Again, like I said, the $2 or the two days of packaging lead time, and then the greater capability to renegotiate. Um, because these two locations, Smyrna and Canton, are a little bit farther than the Olive Branch facility, we will accrue or incur um, an additional freight costs. And we calculate that to be about $400,000. The longer backhaul, because these locations are farther, it will take longer to get back. So it really isn't too much farther. It's only about 125 to 150, depending which location you're going to, a miles extra. Now, up, a, up a at the top, we said there's a volatile buffer. Currently, we pay a, $1.61 per mile for the trucks to go to the Olive Branch facility. Now the sensitivity analysis, where, where does this option become um, volatile or, or when does it become disrupted? There's a 35 cent buffer. If we reach $1.99 or $1.96, depending which route we take, and Josh is going to clarify those routes in the following slide, this option no longer is viable. We should stay with the current option of using the, of the olive branch facility. I'll spend the, uh, kind of a breakdown or walkthrough of those costs in Exhibit 3 of your appendix. Um, as my colleague Logan mentioned, we talked about how we have a $1.61 current uh, fulfillment rate uh, through our current process. Uh, reaching $1.99 for Smyrna uh, reaches that break even point. We're enjoying the cost savings from handling right now. Um, and right now, this is based off the assumption of a 50 50 split where we come up with the $1.1 million savings. Um, we came up with the assumption of the 50-50 split, depending on how you allocate uh, your, your volume uh, with this option towards both options of Smyrna and, 
can, as we stated, or as Logan stated, Smyrna has a dollar ninety-nine break even. Canton with a dollar ninety-six. Now this gives us the range in which we can expect savings of about one point zero six to one point one five million in savings and handling costs, to, according to our projections. Let us now proceed to the second option that we have, uh, which uh, is our preferred method for our long-term solution. We believe that uh, by doing this option, we'll be able to have long-term savings for our big cost of release. Um, we'll be able to avoid transportation risk. Inside the tour uh, in Autolib, we, we discovered and learned that uh, they are aware of weather fluctuations and accidents, which may hinder us from transporting our goods and services. Um, so it's important to take note of that. And then we'll be able to eliminate fulfillment costs. Um, since we, uh, Nissan will take over, we don't have to worry about uh, transporting from Utah to Smyrna and, and Canton. And then last is uh, we open availability for future contract volume because uh, instead of catering, um, catering Nissan in our uh, cross-stock warehouse in the Poly branch, we'll be able to cater a different customer and uh, use that for them. All right, so well, there's a lot of pros that come in with this long-term solution. The main pro that we have going is that this will create a cost savings for AutoLeap of $5.9 million. That savings, as mentioned earlier, comes from uh, passing off the logistics to Nissan uh, for distribution to their facilities. Uh, also mentioned earlier, uh, the availability to increase volume in all of the branch uh, the facility. It brings in additional demand for us to utilize. And that risk associated with transferring products or shipping products in snow in case something gets stuck, uh, we don't have to worry about that anymore. However, we need to take into consideration this, that the way products are being shipped through AutoLeave um, is the right way of doing it. And the way we do it is using these totes. These totes get expensive. Uh, for Nissan to buy the amount of totes that they need, that is a $3.6 million investment. And they won't be able to see a return on the investment for the first five years. But after those five years, they're making money. Um, and something that we are taking into consideration is that we're not, we don't know exactly how Nissan is going to fulfill their logistics performance. Um, we believe we'll be able to provide some training for Nissan on how we do our logistics, but it's ultimately up to them on how they're going to get our materials to distribute it to their facilities. Okay, so to justify the, the numbers that um, my colleague just mentioned, we put together another break-even point. Um, so Nissan makes an initial investment year one of $3.6 million. So this is the current value of that investment. Now every four years they have, they have to re, uh, cycle through the totes they have because the totes have a useful life of four years. So you'll see there's a dip in that, that value of the investment that goes down to four years because they have to reinvest in new totes. And then again at eight years. So they do break even as in year three, but because of that investment, they dip back down and they come back up. So around year five and a quarter, that is the point to where they, they become profitable based on the investment they made. So these are the, the conclusions and the, uh, the numbers we put together in order to calculate this. And as you can see, this is also one of the exhibits. Um, we, uh, based on the numbers that um, AutoLeave is using, um, AutoLeave has a 17 day cycle time with their totes. So we calculated, go ahead and click the next one. Nissan wanted a 20 day cycle time with the current totes and the annual demand. So we calculated numbers that would give us the 63 driver um, airbag totes, but of course the passenger 932 and the curtain to almost 3,000. Uh, go ahead and click the next one. Uh, this is all based on a 20% cost of capital. And that was kind of the, uh, I guess the, the goal that Nissan had. Uh, they didn't want to go or surpass that 20%. Um, lastly, AutoLeave, uh, like Tanner said, gets this $5.9 million 
of cost savings and they essentially give it to Nissan. And we no longer have to take over those the, the cost of transporting to the Olive Branch and then the, the touch cost that happened at the Olive Branch crosswalk. Thank you, Logan. So I want to provide us a quick recap on our two options. Option number one is auto leave providing direct uh, shipment to Nissan's locations. Uh, we believe it's a short term uh, fix with potentially diminishing cost savings. The money we are making is anywhere between 1.06 to 1.15 million dollars in cost savings. However, there's one thing that uh, was previously mentioned that we need to take serious consideration of is that 35 cent buffer uh, with shipment costs. If shipment costs raise past 35 cents, we're no longer making a profit. Our second option is our long-term potentially growing opportunities. This one, we see the most uh, cost savings for auto leave. We will receive anywhere between $5.9 million in savings. Uh, we'll be able to accept more demand from our crosstalk warehouse, um, Olive Branch, and uh, we believe this will ultimately improve our relationship with Nissan, uh, who also captures increased savings. So as we mentioned, the recommendation and the reasons for our recommendation for going with Nissan capturing fulfillment, uh, we believe the best way to implement this strategy uh, is preparing logistics through transition, uh, for, uh, the logistics transition through incremental rollouts uh, with Nissan. So this is best explained with our processes that we have in mind with. Uh, right now we're currently with the Kaizen improvements within our facility. Those are going really well and we believe that Nissan and uh, our team at All Elite can benefit from collaborating these Kaizen improvements. Uh, we have four years left with our contract in Olive Branch. So this is a perfect time to uh, work with uh, Nissan as we develop their logistics program to uh, be able to handle the fulfillment responsibility they'll take on as we transition into this solution. Um, we like to propose beginning with Smyrna first, as it has more uh, advantageous cost savings uh, initially. Um, this will kind of help us buffer against any unforeseen changes that we need to make to the logistics program with Nissan. Uh, many of the benefits come from the increased lean management capability. Uh, that's kind of obvious with the four-year uh, remaining contract. We have a great opportunity to increase the, the capability of both companies in lean management. And this also leads to improved logistics capabilities as we'd like to collaborate best practices among com amongst companies. Uh, we also believe that this will help us ultimately strengthen our customer relationship with one of our best customers. And we feel that this solution best meets the problem statement as we mentioned previous. Thank you. Questions? Thank you. All right. We will now have time for uh, 10 minutes for Q&A. <laughs> study done, uh, or any, do you guys do anything to look at the variation in diesel fuel cost from month to month, to year to year, to determine how long that would actually take, or if that 35 cent uh, variation would ever happen, there's been fluctuation that in the past. I think we came up with the conclusion to declare it volatile on the premise that um, as far as current political conditions, especially in countries that are heavy in uh, oil, um, like you know, Middle East. I think we're trying to con consider the fact that those tensions can rise, which might increase pressure on increasing the oil prices. And so that volatility—that's uh, why we hesitate to go with that option for that reason—is is political outside tensions, um, and we don't know what's going to happen as uh, as you know, our president is trying to bring in more jobs that might discourage uh, cheaper alternatives that we can find overseas as well. We're also taking into consideration um, the demand for uh, truckers or people shipping. So if there is an increased demand, they can increase their prices. Good. Are you, you're basing your assumption on, on what your current freight rates are, but under the um, ELD, that's gone into effect and it's tightened the capacity substantially locally. Uh, how do you see that impacting your figures over the next three to five years? 
that figure for us was unknown. We, we weren't quite sure how to, to justify that. So I couldn't give you a clear answer to that one. So uh, when you were talking about option two, uh, your preferred method, um, how did you calculate holding costs for Nissan? Because if, if you look at the supply chain, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, they're going to be holding on to uh, the product longer. Their, their on-hand inventory is going to go up dramatically because of the lead time, the transit time from uh, auto lead to the, to the plant directly. So how did you come up with the, the, the holding cost for that? All right, so we actually, uh, through a lack of data, we weren't able to calculate that, but we took that into consideration. Although we still feel that this is the best option as, um, yes, their, their payoff period comes about five years down the road, but long term, they still gain substantial savings. Um, even with consideration of holding costs, this might extend about a year um, with, in regards to the current plan for the net present value of their option here. Did you guys take into consideration um, Nissan's probably the biggest volume going through that olive branch. What would that do to the rates of that crosstalk um, if they don't have that volume going through there? So the hidden costs that may occur, um, and we considered that there could be a change in our overall lease. We weren't quite sure what type of agreement we had, whether it be from volume, or is it like a per monthly basis, or is it a yearly contract, and we just said this is, this is what we promised. We weren't quite sure. So, we could give you a clear answer on that. I also wish to add that we have uh, several contracts coming in, and so that might fit the gap with the uh, warehouse and public branch. That's kind of really where we really emphasize that point. Um, yeah, with our lack of volume from Nissan, we hope to replace with, I think there's a lot of emphasis on the concern about the upcoming demand that we'll be expecting here soon in this year. And so we hope to fill that gap, as uh, James mentioned, with other companies. And the Olive Branch is in a great position near companies that are, are big, big customers. So we like the location of Olive Branch and the potential it has. So your 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 assumption is, is that the Nissan business essentially picks up from Ogden, Utah, and you're just going to backfill that business with an assumption that more business is going to go into that location. Right? Yes, and we do have time. Uh, our second option focuses that and this is an incremental, uh, uh, I guess, loadout or rollout. Rollout, thank you. For uh, Nissan to start covering logistics. So, as uh, new plants are being built for these auto manufacturers, we expect that demand to be filled through the cost. Yeah, and to add on, it, it, like, like you said, it is a soft pullout from the cross stock operations. Because we have a four-year contract. And whether that be volume or something else, we want to still deliver and slowly help Nissan. That's why we mentioned the Smyrna lane first and walk into that and see what kind of, what kind of troubles we go through and challenges. And if we're able to smooth that, then we're able to jump into the Canton lane as well really smoothly. So <clears throat> your five point million in savings, that is, is that based on this soft rollout, or is that based on if they took over all fulfillment immediately? That's uh, that, that's a great question. That would be the total savings over over the the completion of the implementation. So, so based on the soft rollout, with them just taking the Smyrna route. Yes. Yes. And we'd see it increment. So it probably taking the Smyrna, we'd probably see about half of that um, savings first. And then as we implement the Canton uh, uh, route, then the full savings would be realized to our expectation. So is that, a, is that a yearly savings? Yes. Yes, that's a yearly savings. So that's what we're currently undergoing right now with our own strategy. So you show a $5.9 million annual cost savings from the logistics side. Uh, on your cons, you have a $3.6 million cost of initial packaging investment. Yep. Um, what other added cost is Nissan going to have besides just the cost of that? Well, we, we talked about how there's potential for increased insurance premiums as uh, they might use England just the way we are. Um, but they're already using them. Right. But adding two lanes might increase the insurance required for them to cover those routes for England. So we expect insurance increases um, 
potential uh, you know air air freight for them because if they have the delays that we've experienced over the years, then they'll expect those as well. So do you have something or do you have figures to show the total cost that Nissan's going to absorb if they take these uh, we sell these routes to them? We weren't able to gather those costs uh, through lack of data, uh, however, but we, we still feel strongly, again, that their payoff, although not immediate, will far outweigh the benefits because the, the trend just goes upward after five years. How much additional cost did you allocate to Nissan um, against that risk assessment? So this is based on the, the freight cost. Um, we had two costs given. We had the cost dot cost, freight cost, and those were known. So this is totally allocated towards um, our freight cost over the year. And if our annual savings, or Nissan's annual savings, of not having us do their logistics and choosing a direct store delivery, totally based on freight cost. Did you take into consideration safety stock? And what we would do for them in order to have to hold the safety stock? Right? Right well, now, there, that's kind of where the 20 days cycle time comes okay. in. Uh, we, our team was initially concerned that they wouldn't be able to handle the 17-day cycle time, so we implemented an extra three days worth of totes for them to handle that. That's the 20-day versus the 17, right. so three days. Of, and Nissan asked for that because, I mean, it's an unknown operation. They want to be able to have a safe contingency against those threats. So essentially three days is about $600,000 impact. Yeah, it was yeah. huge, yeah. which really surprised us. We were a little uneasy about the numbers. But as we thought about tow costs, where I mean, an airbag for the driver to tow cost is about $400 per tow. And then passenger, $423. Curtain, you're looking at $1,027-ish per tow. So if we, we increase each, each type of um, airbag by just a little bit, that's a very large cost. But putting it to an MPV analysis kind of eased our our concerns with that because we were we were concerned are they going to actually save money or is this just going to be a continuous basically replenishing the money that we're spending on the totes but as you can see uh, the MPV shows very profitable over time. Yeah. 